So here's a little bit more in the fraud reporting when there's fraud against the Social Security Administration. Um, this one occurred in Montana and the gentleman from Hamilton who was 51 years old pled guilty on June 27th of 2023 to what was a really long drawn out I guess investigation because it says here that Aaron Lee Grossman, um, he's actually of Washington, Utah, but formerly of Hamilton. He pled guilty in February um, to making false statements to the government agency. So it goes on to say, and this is again, Office of Inspector General reporting. Um, that's where I get all my reports from. Um, he was sentenced to three years of probation with three months to be spent on electric location monitoring, a $20,000 fine, and was ordered to pay over $71,000 in restitution to the SSA. Um, and he also has to do 150 hours of community service. So it looks like the false statements he made garnered him more than $70,000 $70, in disability benefits, disability payments. Um, they talk about, it was alleged that in 2011, so this is how long someone can be doing some rather um, dishonest acts with regard to social security disability. And, you know, you might think you get away with it for a while. Like, look at that, 2011 it is now 2023, but it caught up with him, obviously. Um, his sentence doesn't seem very stiff. Um, and will he ever pay the restitution? Who knows? Um, but it says that he apparently applied in 2011 for Social Security Disability. Um, and of course, when, when his application was approved, the SSA, as they do, because they, they give you brochures and it's on their website, and I'm not sure what, con what constitutes ample notice, but uh, they say they advise him of his legal obligation to notify the SSA if he experienced a change in his ability to work, return to work, or if his medical condition improved. And that's standard for all of us, right? When we're collecting the benefits, it's all about work, whether we can work. So if we start to work, they have to take a look-see and see if that indicates we've improved. So that's why it's always required that if you do start to do work, even part-time work, you have to notify the SSA. That would be true for Social Security Disability and for SSI, of course. Um. In February of 2020, the SSA learned that he had started a new business and not reported it as he was required to do. Um, they also learned that he had received over 36 grand from a company called Lynch Insulation in 2019 for work he performed through his own consulting company, which apparently, I think it's his own consulting company because it's called Grossman Consulting LLC. Um, the SSA... Uh, provided him with a work activity report so he could report on this, um, and he did so, but um, he did not report report making any money from the Lynch insulation job. Um, they note that had he reported the income, he would not have been el eligible for SSDI benefits because he would have exceeded that SGA for too long. Um, then, of course, when he was confronted, he lied to agents, um, and then he claimed that his wife had made those wages. Uh, with Lynch, not himself, um, as if maybe she was working for the LLC and doing all the work because he was too disabled to. Um, but they go on to say that the records from Lynch insulation indicated that it that Grossman, the gentleman, had in fact concluded the work, not the wife. Um, he was interviewed in 2021 and he admitted he concealed his income from the Lynch insulation work so he could maintain his government benefits. Um, it's interesting, 2021, he admitted it. It's, it's just always amazing to me how long it takes, 2023 by the time he gets sentenced. I don't know, it just seems like everything is so drawn out all the time. Um, I'm sure there's good reason and maybe it has to do with uh, due process. Um, I don't know if it has to do with the fact that, you know, we were a couple years or one year into COVID and maybe there was slowing things up. I don't know, I just question these things all the time. Um, let's see. He also underreported the value of his work for another company that was owned by his father from 2019 to 2021. 
And his father disclosed that the son's hourly wage there was set so low so he could maintain his disability benefits. So you see, there was a lot of underhanded business going on here um, where the person was earning more than they represented by a long shot. And uh, things do often catch up. You know, you don't know what they're looking at. And, you know, you are able to work within the confines of the rules for working while disabled. So the only reason people would go more and then continue to collect is, let's face it, it's pure pure greed and it's it's a high risk it's a high risk thing to do um because it's, there's so many ways it can come back to you and it can be discovered it can be discovered through um probably financial reportings uh that you're unaware of by others sometimes people get reported by say their neighbor or a family member who just thinks it's wrong and turns them in i don't know how it happened here that would be really curious right by the way um this is in the district of montana if anyone's interested. So there you go. Long-term investigations over 10 years old and they still come to bite someone in the butt. Okay. So keep that, keep that in the back of your mind. If anyone was ever thinking of doing something like that, don't do it. Okay. Have a great day guys. It's, um, it's uh independence day. So yeah, I am in here. I was working on an appeal. <laughs> so I figured I'd whip this out. So I was just reading through it and let, let, let it be a share to you all. All right. Bye now.